Hello everybody, my name is Teresa Dolivara. I'm the program leader for uh, organizational psychiatry and psychology. A bit different uh, from the other programs um, you will hear about today, so very happy to be here. Um, today I will talk a bit about uh, the program. Uh, we'll give you an overview of the structure. We'll have a new structure for next year, so I'm very happy to present it for the first time. Um, we'll go into some more details on the objectives of the program and also the core modules that I think are really unique to, to this program. And then um, who usually collaborates with the program, uh, what happens next, and hopefully we'll have some time to um, answer to some of your questions um, or just uh, any additional information that you may want. So. Uh, we have a, what we describe as a very unique uh, program um, that links work and workplaces with uh, well-being and mental health. If you probably um, have been listening to the news on mental health, mental health in the workplace is at the moment um, a really hot topic. So this is what we address. We try to um, expand the tradition that King has in the study of uh, mental health and apply it to the workplace and you will see how we go about it. It's different and I like to stress this, it's dif different from your traditional program on occupational psychology. A traditional program on occupational psychology is much more focused on performance and is usually closer to HR. Our program has a big component of mental health which usually the traditional programs on occupational psychology don't have. So it's unique in that, in that sense. Uh, we take about 25 students. Uh, we had a record number of students this year. So I can tell you that our cohort has a maximum of 40 students. And that's what we have uh, this year. It's a highly subscribed uh, program. I should tell you that last year by April, we just had to close uh, the program, so um, if you're interested, please do submit an application. Um, it's, it's approved by the BPS for, continu for continuous professional development, and it's also accredited by the Association for Business Psychology. And during um, um, their studies, the students have a free membership uh, with the Association for Business Psychology. They usually run several um, training events and career events, so our students are also able to take advantage of those initiatives. So our new structure that I'm really happy to talk about, um, as most of the programs that um, you will hear today, there's a big component of research. I would say that a third of our program has to do with research, so research methods and your dissertation. Then we have the basic mental health. That's actually a model that we share with other programs, clinical programs. And then we have the three um, modules that uh, I describe as unique in the program. Um, and I will go into some more details um, on these three models. Um, you can enroll in the program as a full-time student, and that's one year program, and you have all these modules. Or if you want to do it as part-time student, you can do it. And usually what we recommend is that during your first year, you will do these first three modules, and during the second year, you will do the remaining three modules. So that's an alternative as well. So what are the program's objectives? So I've mentioned some of the characteristics that uh, make it unique. Um, we try to link um, the more than approaches to organizational behavior um, <coughs> to mental health. Uh, but different from occupational health, we consider well-being. So we consider well-being as instrumental to improve performance. Um, we try to address what are the antecedents and the different manifestations of occupational mental health. So this is very close to occupational health psychology. Um, and here is where we have the link between the psychiatry and the psychology. So we clearly have a clinical component, but also an organizational component. Um, we try to address this at individual level, interpersonal level, and organizational level. And to give you an idea of what is an organizational level, we talk about culture, 
organizational culture and everybody now is talking about a culture of well-being so how can we actually try to develop a culture of well-being within our organization so this has to do with the organizational practices yeah so that's an example of the topics that we try to to address um, and the last part that I want you to highlight has to do with the strategies and the interventions that we can uh, develop to promote and improve uh, mental health in the workplace. I would go into the background of the three main models of the program. And these are some of the really bad statistics that we have about mental health in the workplace. So in the UK, we have statistics that uh, tell us about uh, stress, depression, and anxiety. In other countries, we don't have these detailed statistics. We just know it's uh, ill health, and that's all. But in the UK, we actually have um, these numbers. Um, and we can identify um, some major factors associated with stress. So we know that stress is predominant in, cer in certain industries, um, in education and health care. There are two examples of industries uh, that have higher levels of stress. Um, and then I would like to highlight this because it's really unique of the program. So most of the uh, programs that uh, you heard today or will hear today focus on the clinical side. We try to focus on the antecedents of the clinical results. So, and if we take um, what the statistics say about the antecedents, the antecedents of stress are usually associated with workload, changes at the workplace, um, violence and bullying, lack of support. These are organizational factors. These are not individual factors. So this is what we try to address when we talk about organizational psych psychology. What are the three modules, special, specialist models that I've mentioned? Mental health in the workplace. Essentially, what we address here is a stress, um, workplace stress framework. So what in the workplace can work as a stress? That has to do with the nature of the activity that you're performing, but it also has to do with the working conditions. Um, then we have the module on managing mental capital. Mental capital has to do with cognitive resources and emotional resources. So how can we develop those cognitive resources and emotional resources within the workplace? And then we have the intervention, so what can we do about it, about the stresses that we have identified, about the psychological well-being issues that we have, have identified. We have a combination of different profiles of lectures in our program. So we try to, occupational psychology is a very, very applied area of work. Most of the students do their dissertation in a workplace, so it's very, <laughs> very applied. So our lectures also reflect um, an academic component and an applied component. And in the academic component, you have me, you have other colleagues at the IOPPN uh, from different departments, uh, different divisions, but we also have a good collaboration with the business school here at King. So they also collaborate with us, as some of the colleagues are also working in organizational psychology or in organizational behavior. And then we have colleagues that um, have their own consultancy companies or are working for big companies associated with programs that promote mental health and well-being in the workplace. We have different um, study methods and assessments. So this is also something that we introduced as new in the program. I really wanted to have diversified methods uh, uh, in the program um, because once you finish the program and you start working you really do not do exams most of the work that you will do will be project based so our assessment methods have to reflect what will be required in practice um, so we have a combination of exams individual essays group essays um, you will also have um, individual presentations or group presentations and discussion of the project that you want to implement so this is an example of what you can have 
And then, as with other programs, you have the dissertation um, that is usually a 10,000 word um, uh, document. Um, in terms of future careers, um, well-being and wellness in the workplace is associated with many different areas in organizations. In some organizations, the well-being and wellness program is clearly associated with HR. So there's a group in HR that usually um, is involved in the evaluation of engagement and how we can promote engagement. And they are usually also associated with the well-being program. So in some organizations, if you want to work in this area, it's closer to HR. In other organizations, a well-being and wellness program is actually in health and safety because it is considered, it is a, also a component of health. You have physical health and mental health. So it's in health and safety. And in other organizations, well-being is actually a part of diversity and inclusion. So the careers that you can have after this program um, are diversified because it depends on the organization you're working for and how they position well-being and mental health within the organization. But it can be very diversified. You have some examples there. Some students are more interested in research and they would like to continue um, with a PhD different areas or continue within organizational psychology. Some students are interested in the clinical path so their objective after the program is to um, get a position as an assistant psychology and then um, go to the DIC clinic. Um, some will go to consultancy um, and some will work uh, in mental health. Yeah? And so different positions. Um, and as I've mentioned before, can be associated with HR, health and safety, health and, safety and diversity and inclusion. Um, in terms of eligibility criteria, you don't have to have a background. Uh, your undergraduate studies don't have to be in psychology, but you do have to have a strong component of psychology and research methods. And this has to do with the clinical component that we have, but also we assume in the specialist models that you already have a background in some of the main areas of psychology. Um, and as in the other programs, we expect a two one uh, in your undergraduate studies. Um, I think that's it. So this is my class from last year. I should say it's a very international program. So more than 50% of our students are, are international students. So that's not even that's not even including EU students. UK students are usually less than a quarter of our students. So it creates a really interesting uh, learning environment because it also reflects much of the diversity that we found today in the workplace. So thank you very much.